last time on Dice Funk. In the middle of the desert is Valentine itself. Two cities stacked on top of each other, floating in the air. I just can't go on another adventure and kill people. It's just, there's a threshold and I've crossed it. I killed like a thousand of my best friends back there. Um, Reese, Reese, um, just just remember, we have all the power right now. So like, don't, don't give an inch. <laughs> Blood Maw, the Invincible. He's a professional wrestler who uh, shoots blood everywhere. Uh, and mechanically, he's a level 10 barbarian. You swat his head off with the concrete part of the stop sign. His body falls underneath the loser mailbill, which runs it over and mangles it. Uh, so for the Conduit of Carnage, Blood Maw can choose to make an attack he hits with into a critical hit, but his target will get an opportunity attack against him should they survive the attack. Uh, so Alistair says, so you just expect me to take this gavel and move to a condo in Schmorida <laughs> and just leave Valentine and let you yahoos take over? Yep. Bye, Felicia. And I'm going to hang up. I don't know what's in the vault, but Aaron promised that I could bring back an era of gods. Then it better be brought back by someone who knows what the gods were really like. Are we going to the Oak and Holly? But there's only one person on the dance floor. Who it be? Private Fortune. Ah, oh, I, I didn't know it, but I should have known it. He has a rocket launcher. I grew up on the crime side, the New York Times side. Staying alive was no job, had second hand. Moms bounced on old man. So then we moved to Shallon land. A young youth, you're rocking the go to. No goose, only way I begin the GO was drug loop. And let's start it like this, son. I was against it, but Lauren is extremely robo racist. What the fuck? So. Why'd you bring me into it? <laughs> isn't, isn't it Chris that we started this season canonically saying that uh, Lenora was robophobic? No, it was uh, Katarina. Katarina is ro- Katarina was aggressively robophobic. Yeah, Katarina's robophobic, so like, yeah, it's Chris's fault. <laughs> hey, keep me out of this. I'm innocent. Ignore what I just said. <laughs> All right. So last we left this adventure. That's the thing I say at the beginning of the episode. Last time we left this adventure, I think that's what I say. Anyway. What? Well- our heroes, in quote. <laughs> uh, our doofuses were exploring uh, Valentine itself, the final dungeon in the desert. Um, as you guys have worked your way through here, you've noticed that it's less a physical space and more of a metaphysical projection. Um, it seems to be changing all around you. Space is warped and time is bendable. You exit a wrestling... Uh, not rink, that's hockey. A wrestling... Ring. Ring. That's why I said rink, because my brain is like, you know the word, but I'm very dumb. You es- you exited the wrestling ring and found yourself in an alleyway that led somehow onto the dance floor of the Oak and Holly nightclub, where Private Fortune, Milk Snake Yuan T, aka Snurson, uh, is waiting for you. He has a missile launcher. Missile launchers, uh, distinct from grenade launchers which we talked about earlier in the season he has the long tube with the thing on uh, the end of it which he puts on he holds it on the shoulder and it goes pew, when a rocket comes and pew. is it a missile launcher or is he just really pleased to see us <laughs> i don't know how you could confuse the two things in the way he's holding it he's just holding the missile launcher like a normal person and not like some kind of clearly missile never, pervert you've clearly never seen a person hold a uh, missile launcher <laughs> <laughs> laura do you know a lot of missile perverts <laughs> Missile Pervert sounds like a pretty good name for an EDM group, right? You know? <laughs> I, I don't know. Or like 90s punk. What do I have to roll to like flirt our way past this encounter? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's pretty upset with you guys. I don't know if flirting is going to work. Because you walk out onto the dance floor and the, mm-hmm. the music's pumping in here as if there's a full club full of dancers. But there's not. There's just one snurston with a missile launcher. And he says to you, I knew you'd show up, bruh. This one's on you, Lenora. <laughs> hey, bruh. He points the rocket launcher at you, Lenora. Lion ass bitch, I saw you on the TV. Uh, what I do? <laughs> you really want to get blown up, don't you? <laughs> I don't know, I've been on the TV a lot. Uh huh. He saw you that claiming to have saved people and that you're a big hero, but he knows that you lied at the at Fort Splendor and that you were part of the bad people there. 
and no one believed him because he was just one of the random people who got drugged there, like soul survival of the Fort, Fort Splendor massacre. But he remembers what happened before, and that is that you seduced him in an attempt to, sn- to slip in. Sometimes people make mistakes. And they think, wow, this is a good spell to use, and it will not cause a mass murder. And then, oops. Uh, But I did take you to the hospital, because I tried to save you. Please, please, no missile launcher. (laughs) You killed all my friends, all my comrades, people I went to school with, my brothers and sisters. Are you out of your mind? I I swear to God, I really wasn't trying to kill anyone. Like, I mean, I guess intention doesn't matter, but... Just like you didn't kill Brody Monk, who was an honorable undercover officer that you all betrayed? What? uh, Mardis will take a moment to spend a spell slot to cast Disguise Self on himself to make himself look like Mardis, um, as opposed to Ed, just for aesthetic reasons. And use a sorcery point to extend the length of the spell to last uh, two hours. <laughs> okay. You're so concerned about being misled. Brody Monk was a fabrication as well. Brody Monk never existed. Why would I believe any of you psychotic murderers? I'm not asking you to believe us. I'm just telling you the <laughs> truth. Do any of us have zone of truth? Also, I know I don't. Also, I think all of you are just covered in blood because you just came from a room where you just massacred four people, including one person or two people. I think were murdered by uh, Blood Maw, who does not really take splash damage into consideration. Their blood shall water our gardens. Yeah, you're just absolutely covered in blood. Yes, that is an accurate description. <laughs> you guys aren't getting any further in here. The vault's not yours. It belongs to the people of Valentine. You, you guys are s- selfish tyrants. I'm not going to deny we have done. We have not handled this necessarily well, but like, is is the short version? The people running this town have been entirely messed up for a very long time, keeping the people of this country down, and we are very close to being in a position to finally change some things for the better. We are probably going to have to pay for an awful lot of stuff we have done along the way here, but we've been we've been trying to change things for the better and we have not done necessarily done that the right way, but we are trying to fix things and I hope you can see that, but you're not going to stop us continuing. Ooh, okay, so you say you're not going to stop us, at which time you guys uh, learn the negative consequence of not taking military as one of your conquests, because yeah. the walls slide open and four Archon soldiers come out, uh, two from each side of this room, as the, the music continues to blare on the dance floor. These were the ones that were very electric hurted. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Let's hope they still are. <laughs> we're not bad people. We don't do murders for no reason. Oh, yes, these guys crisp up very nicely. <laughs> if, the, if they are going to fight us, I'm glad that it's at least ones that I know that... I know how to fight. <laughs> All right. So now there is a private fortune who is a milk snake. It's a red, black, and yellow snake. Um, not venomous, but he's, he's a humanoid. He has legs. And now there are four Archon soldiers, two on each side of you as well in here. And he still has the, the rocket launcher pointed at Lenora, who he has particular enmity towards. Please blow something up. Oh, yeah. The Genjis. Uh, I, uh, welcome back, Genjis. Plural. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, Genjis. That's the sitcom where there's just four faceless armored soldiers who have a sitcom shenanigans. I know you're mad, and I understand why you're mad. But we, do you not realize that? I mean, yes, we fucked up too, but like, Aaron was there literally just snapping people's necks. How many people have you killed? Be honest. More than I would like. The dead and blood moss feet are immeasurable. <laughs> you literally don't even know, do you, Lenora? How many people have you killed? Two. Your track record is weak. Okay, well, I guess you haven't been to war yet. Fine. I was deployed as a teenager. Put down riots in Kaldu. This is a different kind of war. And that sounds really dramatic, but, I mean, we can't let shit go on and we can't let 
I know, I guess you think we're the wrong hands. So me saying we can't let the city get into the wrong hands is kind of a moot point. All we wanted to do when we started out on this was we wanted to get ourselves financially stable and that got us wrapped up into we had people trying to kill us from moment one and no way to back out of a stupid choice we made that escalated ridiculously. Yeah, we've killed a lot of people, but a lot of people have tried to kill us. Cool life story, bro. I would... Okay, we... We overthrew a god that was trying to, like, get people into eternal debt. That was a thing we did, like, today. You realize how absolutely bonkers that sounds, right? Did you just hear the words you said to me? Yeah, I know. If I was... He came for pain! (laughs) If I was trying to come up with a lie, do you really think that is the lie I would come up with that I would think would be a good lie? Did Blumaw just yell he came for pain apropos of nothing? Okay. <laughs> yes. The four Archon soldiers uh, take out their, like, supersonic batons. They're ready to fight. Listen, I don't want to fight you. Like, let's just... Bloodmaw does! Be cool and talk about this. What is there to talk about? Maybe do some therapy? A fight is pretty much inevitable here, Private Fortune. But... I wanted to at least say to you that I'm sorry. We had a job we were trained to do. We made some key mistakes and things got incredibly out of hand. And that's not going to bring back anyone that you cared for. But you have my full sincerity when I say that I am sorry for our mistake. I've also lost people that I cared for though. And right now I don't know if what's in that vault is going to bring them back, but I'm going to try my damnedest to do it, to get in there, get some answers. And I will fight you if you stand in my way. So we can make this easy, or we can make this unnecessarily rough. Private Fortune says, let's go with easy. And then he pulls the trigger. (laughs) Uh, dexterity saving throw, everybody, as a rocket streaks across the dance floor. Oh, boy. I'm still, uh, raged, right? Uh, 14? I think so, yeah. 17? I rolled two 19s, that's so weird. Lenora and, uh, Mardis save. Mm-hmm. So they're going to take half, everyone else is going to take full. How about we take none? Oh, I hadn't considered that. I know. Uh, you, you don't have that class feature, though, unfortunately. Oh, bad roll. So 15 damage full, seven for half. Uh, I think what happens is, is he messes up basic rocket training, which is to aim at the ground near your target. So they get caught in the blast no matter what, even if you miss. But he aims midsection to try to blow Lenore up personally. He tries to hit you in the chest and it misses by a foot or so, which happens. And it hits the wall behind you. And you guys are all hit with shrapnel and rubble, but you do not get blown up the way that I was kind of hoping that rocket would do. Um, and it seems like we are going to roll initiative now. Okay. Five. I rolled a 15. 51. That's No, that's excessive. that. That was a misclick. I misclick. Calm down. 10. 51. 16. <laughs> 27. All right. Mardis is first. As a note, I rolled concentration and see if I still maintain uh, a hunter's mark. And I do. So... That is still valid. So, uh, Mardis' first action is to. He's going to use Hunter's Mark against um, Private Fortune instead. Mm-hmm. And then attack Private Fortune with advantage with. Uh, let's see, that's a 31 for the attack roll. Yep, that hits. 20 damage. As, as he does this, he is then going to use his movement to kind of run like towards the opposite side of Private Fortune, kind of doing the standard ed tactic of shoot and and then provide a separate target away from the rest of the group. All right, so what happens is uh, Private Fortune fires the rocket. It hits the wall behind the party, damages them all pretty badly. Mardis gets the draw and aims right at Private Fortune and shoots him with the, um, the best gun you have, Coda. Yep. General Heller's old gun. Um, And... Fortune uses his conduit of service, um, which is his ability, you know, his military training, his ability to follow orders. He's just a basic, a basic grunt who respects 
you know, capital T, the troops. Mm. Um, and he inspires one of the Archon soldiers to jump in front of the bullet for him. Mm. And they take that damage. He is unharmed. So Fortune is unharmed, but the Archon soldier took the damage. Correct. Yes. All of his soldiers are loyal and are going to take all damage for him until they are all dead. That is his conduit ability. Fair enough. Um, so, Mardis, you get the first shot after the rocket goes off, and it is now Frank's turn. Okay, well, I'm going to try and neutralize that whole people jumping in front of bullets for him. That two Archon soldiers who were stood together? Lightning bolt at the pair of them. Uh, 16. That is not enough. Frank! So much damage. Lightning Dad, please. Uh, 30? <laughs> yes, you fry two Archon soldiers, they just die on the spot, like they always Damn, do to Frank. Damn, that's not that much health. It's, it's doubles, yeah. Oh, it's double. oops. Yeah. I never roll that high when it's not going to get doubled. I don't think I've ever rolled more than like, <laughs> than like 15 or 20 otherwise on Lightning Bolt. Um, all right, so you guys are, oh, you were surrounded by Archon soldiers, but, but thanks to Frank, you're no longer surrounded because he blows away all of them on one side of you. Um, and it is now Blood Maw's uh, turn. Blood Maw is going to feast on your leathery skin! And he's going to run towards uh, Private Fortune and going to go into a rage. And I'm going to make two attacks with it then. Uh, we have uh, 22, 26. Yes, both hit. Uh, and that will be 27 damage as I subconsciously think up snake soups uh, recipes. Uh, no, because he uses his conduit of service and one of actually it's the one that Marta's shot jumps in front. So you can paint me a picture of what you do to that guy because he is dead. The stop sign that Blood Maw wields is going to pierce right through that guy's skull and basically cleave all the way through until it basically stops like kind of chunked chunky like through his face. Right in front of Private Fortune, and Blood will say, You will get yours next turn. <laughs> you guys are totally proving his point that you're all monsters who need to be stopped, but anyway. Oh, but it's okay when you kill people by making them throw themselves in front of you? I see. It's all right when you fire rockets at us when we haven't yet attacked you, and then, yeah, force your people to throw themselves in front of the bullet for you. All right, so first of all, he is not persuaded by that. <laughs> Second of all, uh, Blood Maw is in melee range, so he's going to reload his rocket and shoot at Lenora and Frank, who did not move. Dexterity saving throws. Oh, no. Uh-huh. I crit, so... Oh, my... <laughs> I botched. I crit and I botched. Uh, 15? Uh, nope, 15 does not save. Hmm. Great. 22 to Frank, 11 to Lenora as another rocket hits the ground. He has eight health. I thought he had less health than he did. All right, so Frank is nearly blasted to bits. Lenora is badly injured by the rockets. They are not fun to play with. But I did do a cool barrel roll. Okay, you take half, but you do a cool barrel roll. Then the remaining Archon soldier is going to try to hit Blood Maw with his baton. 23 and 23. Weird. Uh, I'm going to say those hit. So 10 and 12. So 22 as he hits you and each hit has a, a concussive blast as if the sound barrier is broken against your skin. These things do... Pack a wall up. That's the reason they have them. Uh, and then it is Lenora's turn. I'm going to use Blight on the remaining Archon, dude. Constitution saving throw? Yes, please. 16. Oh, uh, no, damn it. That matches. You still do half. No, I still do half. That's true. So 98. Uh, so you get 12 damage. All right. So he is uh, hit by a wave of necrotic magic. You don't see any... Uh, effect on him because he's wearing this full body armor but you assume inside there he is suffering and it is Mardis's turn again oh uh, that archive soldier is going to get wrecked in this next shot probably <laughs> um bonus action to to ping uh fortune with planar warrior and then a shot is going to be made against him 28 hit that will be a total of 46 plus 6 plus 1d8 force damage, 19 force damage. Yikes. So paint me a picture on that last soldier. Mardis frowns a bit and even sort of like mouths the words, you know, I'm sorry, because he knows that he's going to make this shot and Private Fortune is going to basically sacrifice this other soldier in his stead. Ames pulls the trigger, hoping that Fortune 
doesn't do that, knowing that the soldier is wounded, um, then sees the soldier shift in place, the bullet slam right into his face, and he collapses on the ground next to Private Fortune, bleeding out. Yep, and it's Frank's turn. Frank, the only person left in on the dance floor, is Private Fortune, who's reloading his rocket launcher. Um... Okay, so first thing Frank's going to do is move away somewhere that, like, if he was going to be targeted by the rocket launcher, it would be targeting him alone. So I'm trying to debate if there's non-lethal ways I can end this. Um, I was looking at potentially expending a dominate person. The issue I would have is because we're already in combat, um, Private Fortune would have advantage on a wisdom saving throw, and I don't know if I like the maths there. He's not very wise. Screw it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a chance at it. Uh, dominate person. Wisdom saving throw. You, uh, Private Fortune has advantage. All right. So as he's targeted, he's going to use his conduit of service uh, to call in more soldiers. Bitch. Not in the way you might expect, though. Um, he glows with magic, much the way that you guys do when you use your conduit, and you guys uh, only get an instant to respond as the. Subway between North and South Valentine, the subway train crashes through the wall of the club. Uh, everybody dexterity saving throw as an entire whole ass train enters this room. Uh, 11. These are not things we could have prepared for. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna get, so 15 doesn't save, I assume, correct? It does. Crit. Uh, 20. I do another cool barrel roll. Um, all right, so everybody saves. You guys take five damage uh, as rubble hits you. None of you are hit by the train, um, which rolls into the middle of this room at a, s- a slowed stop, but then its wheels start grinding against the ground as it starts to try to roll out of here. Um, and Private Fortune uh, is pulled on board as the doors open up and more soldiers inside grab him. And the train's about to pull out the other side of this room. Uh, do I Do I not get that spell that I was casting on him? You can. I'll still roll for one of the soldiers who's going to take it instead to dominate them. So, three! Okay, okay. I I guess I have control of one of the Archon soldiers, which is... I wouldn't have spent a spell of that level for that, but I guess I need to work out what to do with that now. We, we all got a reaction, right? Let's, let's hold, hold on. What's the scene here? So a train crashes into the room. Right. Everyone takes five damage. The soldiers, because he used his conduit of service to call them, pull him onto the train. Frank, your ability is deflected and you take control of one of them. Then what happens? I want to try and pull fortune back off. All right. So strength against his, uh, your charisma against his strength. All right. Oh, he's probably real buff. Seven. Twenty. All right, so you yank him uh, halfway off. He's basically a tug of war um, as the train starts to roll out. I am going to order that one Archon soldier. This is the most interesting thing I can think to do with this, is to, to order him to leap off as if nothing's wrong, but not to protect Fortune if ordered. All right, so you have one of his allies leap off of the train as it's leaving. Um, Mardis, with your, uh, passive perception, you see that the train is full of people. Um, there are tons of Archon soldiers. There's also probably some loose Kraken Banes and Ash Forged in there. There's also just looters, drunk college guys, people who saw on the live stream that there was a vault with something in it and came here. Soldiers of Fortune, Shadow Runners, like Pond and Booker. Um, and you also see Sarah, the Bozog, and Spore, the Myconid on there, and they are fighting for their lives as the train pulls away. No! I'm getting on. I want to jump on that train, please. All right, Lenora jumps onto the train. My girlfriend. Uh, I'm going as I'm going as well. Okay, yep. Frank's gonna jump onto the train, but as as he, hmm, I don't think if there's anything worth doing with this dominate person that I've somewhat wasted on a on an Archon soldier. Uh, you threw him out of the train. That's going to be one less people to fight during this train fight. I suppose. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, so that guy's gone. So now at uh, one end of the train, you, we have Private Fortune. And we have, let's say, there was going to be four more. And now there's three because you threw one off. Um, and in between, there's just a bunch of random people who don't care. And Sarah and Spore, who are fighting random people you don't know. Um, so that's the next stage of this fight. As the train pulls, uh, it rams through the other side of the club and back onto tracks that shouldn't be there. 
And you guys actually see you're now in the subway between North and South Valentine, but it doesn't look like you remember it. There are just strange, enormous roots all over the walls and ceiling of the subway tunnel. And the train is going through them as if nothing's wrong. It's very strange. The laws of physics don't seem to apply particularly well in here. And also all the colors draining out. Um, let's stay in the order. Um, Blood Maw, it's your turn. I want to run down. And I want to help out Sarah and Spore if I can. Can I can I just check a thing quickly? You've left uh, Private Fortune's icon on the roll twenty. Is Private Fortune still in this fight? He's on the tra- he's on the train with us. He's hanging halfway out. Yeah, he was being tug of war between Lenora and a soldier as it was pulling away. But then Lenora saw Sarah and jumped on. Oh, okay, sorry. I thought he was thrown completely off the train. No, your guy got thrown off the train. My guy jumped off the train. Um, so yeah, you took a, you took care of one and soldier all by yourself there, Frank and Blood Maw. You're gonna rush, yeah. Uh, right now, Spore and Sarah are just fighting uh, people you've never met. They just seem to be like a bunch of like uh, I'm trying not to be mean, but let's like you know like yokels or like, chumps. Yeah, they were watching you know uh, two weeks on Snitch dot <laughs> TV, and the uh, new stream stream came up where a, a famous rich guy said, "Hey, I put a vault in the desert," and they're like, "Hell yeah, let's ga- grab you know your dad's hunting rifle and get in the truck and let's go get a vault." And they're they're fighting there. So, um, I mean, they see a demon barrel down on them and they run. Uh, Blood Bob will approach them and scream out, "Comrades, let us make a buffet of their entrails." Yeah. All right. So you scare these chumps off and uh, Spore Spore and um, Sarah turn to you and they know you. You guys wrestle together and they're like, Blood, what's up? Comrades, let us feast upon the skin of our fallen and use it to harden our muscles. (laughs) All right. That's pretty cool. Um, It is now soldier's turn. Um, The soldier, one soldier spends their turn pulling um, Private Fortune all the way onto the train and one soldier is going to... Uh, use defend or is that what the action is called uh it's called dodge dodge yes yeah, going to use dodge to try to hold shore up his defenses because he knows he's gonna get attacked and one of them's gonna hold out his baton and blast the entire car with a wave of uh sonic energy so everybody dexterity or it's constitution saving throw actually uh actually just for blood maw because you ran ahead i roll an 11 that is a fail oh dear you're going to take no Ooh, 21 damage. Blood Maw too strong. Stop. Of Sonic. And also it blasts Sarah and Spore to the to the ground and just a bunch of randos too. This train is like packed. Um very, very snow piercer in here. Uh Lenora, it's your turn. Okay, so nobody's actively attacking Sarah, right? No, Sarah just got knocked to the ground. Everybody did. So now there's a clear shot between you and the Archon soldiers. Oh there's three right. of them. <sighs> I'm going to try Thunderclap, because it can hit a bunch of dudes. Uh, Constitution saving throw. All right. Not good at that. And in fact, just mathematically, uh, area of effect attacks are this counter's weakness. Uh, 16. Oh, fuck. Yeah. You match. All right, uh, Lenora, anything else? No. I can't think of anything else right now. (laughs) Mardis, it's your turn. Uh, the train actually hits a root, uh, not just glancing blow, but like the whole thing rocks to the side for a minute. Mm. Or not a minute, rocks to the side. Mm-hmm. And it's like, whoa, holy, this is not the subway you guys know from back home. This place is wild and out. Mm. I'm trying to think of in, like interpreting that a little bit more. But in the meantime, uh, there are... Uh, I take it that I'm fairly close to the Archon soldiers and Private Fortune because we just jumped onto that entrance that he was on, right? Yeah, you guys were like at opposite ends of this train car, but then the soldier used his baton to knock everyone between y'all down. So you have a straight shot. You won't hit any civilians. Bonus action to do port uh, planner. Jesus. That's your thunderclap. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To do, pl- <laughs> to do a planner warrior against uh, Fortune. Um... He's going to move in and draw out a dagger out of his the slot in his forearm and attempt to stab at Private Fortune with the dagger using Booming Blade. Mm-hmm. So the attack roll is not going to be as nice, but it should hopefully still hit. Nope, it does not. I rolled a 10, so uh, I'm just adjacent to Private Fortune and the Archons there. 
All right. So uh, you run up there and you start trying to knife fight yep. uh, the, th- the three soldiers in Fortune. Fortune has his rocket launcher, but using it in this enclosed, spa- enclosed space is literally suicide. So I don't know if he's going to use it. Maybe if he's pushed far enough. Yeah. Well, also, it, it's the main reason for going to melee is that it's the only way to, using weapons, take out someone uh, non-lethally is to do it in melee. So, Frank, your turn. I'm in a situation where the only non-violent end option I had to this fight does not seem like it can work. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I guess another uh, lightning bolt at the Archon soldiers. All right, so that's going to hit. Uh, you're going to run up next to Ed and just blast all of the, the enemy combatants? Uh, as best I can, because I cannot do the non-violent thing. Three, they fail. Uh, 26. All right, so uh, paint me this picture, because at one end of the train car, there are three Archon soldiers in Private Fortune who's carrying an unloaded rocket launcher. And you run up, and what do you do here? It's a big moment. Um, so Frank's going to run over, and he's going to look at Private Fortune and just go, I'm really sorry, I wanted, I wanted so badly to, to end this non-violently, I'm sorry. And he's just going to throw out a uh, lightning bolt. All right, so you absolutely fill that side of the, the train compartment with lightning. Um, the three people wearing armor die immediately on lightning contact. They are fried inside their suits. Uh, Fortune, for the first time in this fight, I think, takes damage because he does not have anyone to uh, yeah. tank that blast. Also, it's an AoE, so it wouldn't have really worked anyway. Um, but he is electrocuted very badly. Um and he is now allyless as the people his allies just attacked stand back up in this train car. Um, there's people all around him, and they do not look happy. Uh, Frank, Frank is going to look to him and go, Look, there is still time for you to walk away from this, but I tried a minute ago to end this non-violently, and you just threw more people in front of me knowing that I can fry these people. You still threw them in front of you. You had a chance to walk away from this. That's your argument? I should let you win or you're going to keep killing? You you were the first person to, dr- to draw blood here. You, th- you fired missiles at us. You started this fight. That was not first blood. You killed everyone I've ever known. Yeah, and people came and th- tried to kill everyone we knew. It's been a messy few weeks in Valentine. Roll... I think persuasion, unless you're trying to, to use intimidation. It's up to you. No, this is definitely an attempt at persuasion. Uh, so, okay, that's uh, that's a crit. That's 22. Okay. So, if you had failed that, he would have loaded another rocket, and we would have had to deal with him deliberately derailing this train full of civilians. But with a crit, he drops the rocket launcher. Look, I'm not saying what we did was right. But we got in a situation where we feared everyone we knew and cared about was going to die. We feared we were going to die. We we made a series of choices that we kept thinking we can do... We can save the people we want to save without hurting anyone. And it just went worse and worse and worse for us. There are people who are no longer in our group who wanted very differently from us, who did just want death to be the answer, but I'm sorry. We can't take back who you lost, but just trust that we were just trying to stop ourselves losing people too. Suddenly a root that's sticking out of the wall uh, scrapes along the side of the train and smashes out a couple windows, and in the confusion uh, Spore leaps forward and shoots a cloud of, well, spores, uh, into Private Fortune's face, and he, uh, you know, begins to slump to the ground uh, asleep. I want to take his rocket launcher. All right, it's not loaded. I, I don't care if it's loaded. I want it, and then see if he has any missiles on him. Yeah, he has like a, a small satchel on his side, or it's not small. It's like a backpack that has uh, rockets inside. Dope. I'm taking them. Um, yeah. So let's say you get uh, four rockets and a rocket launcher. Sweet. But yes, uh, so Private Fortune was talked down from killing everybody on this train. Spore knocked him out so that you guys don't have to beat him into unconsciousness, (laughs) which I think may have been the only option at a certain point. 
Um, and um, you know, Spore like takes him to his seat and sits him down on this train, which is going through this dark subway tunnel, which is filled with roots for some reason, huge roots uh, all throughout it. And you guys, um, everyone on the train was stunned by this person with a rocket launcher, but they sort of, uh, you know, get back to arguing about, no, dude, I saw the, I saw the stream first. It's going to be mine. And then someone else is like, uh, it's just money, dude. We can split it when we get to the vault. It's not a big can deal. Can I like shout at them and be like, any who wish to get to the vault must fight Blood Maw. Then you will have to win to claim your prize. Otherwise I shall feast upon your bones. Uh, roll for intimidation, obviously, in, with the advantage because you are a demon with a rocket launcher. I don't have a great intimidation, but uh, 18. 18, uh, several people uh, just jump out the window. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there enough time to take a short rest and do some healing on this train? <laughs> uh, not only that, but as people either jump out their windows or just move to another car to get away from Blood Maw, uh, you guys sit down with Spore, Sarah, and Private Fortune's unconscious body. And uh, Spore administers healing spores to the party. Hooray! <laughs> oh, I love him. Long rest. Everyone gets everything back for the final battle. Oh, that's good. Well, it may- might not be final. There's more of this episode in the next episode, so. I'm going to smooch my girlfriend. <laughs> Frank's going to sit down and be a bit depressed about all of the terrible things he's done. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, Frank. Frank just nuked those things yeah, again. He 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 tried not to. Like he was gonna try and dominate person and tell Private Fortune to just go home and and not cause any further harm. I think he mean go home and be a family man. Yeah, yeah. That 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 didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. So Sarah's there. Spore is there. Uh, Sarah's like belly, belly, belly. Oh, my belly. <laughs> it's belly time. No, but, but seriously, babe, what are you doing here? Belly, belly. No. <laughs> we saw on the on the stream that there was like a vault, and uh, I mean, it was mostly Orem and Arjun's idea, and they were like, "Get in the truck, losers! We're going stealing!" And we jumped in, and they ditched us like ten minutes in. I don't know where they are. Yeah, because they're fucking dicks. They are, but they had guns, and it seemed like a good idea when they said it. Oh, you want to see a gun? I'm gonna pull out my gun. <laughs> Uh, uh, she's like, oh, I thought you meant your bicep. That too. You, you want to you try that again? You want to just start from the beginning? Look at these guns, and I flex and like show her my gun at the same time. Nice. Also, I, you should probably give that to someone else. You have a history with guns, I hear. But I feel really cool and powerful. And the last time you felt that way, you shot someone in the arm unintentionally. Well, I saw you in that fight, Lenora. You didn't use the gun. Yeah, I... Didn't feel like it. Sometimes I want to use magic. Sometimes I want to shoot. Let me live my life. <laughs> you made like a boom. And everyone just looked at you. Uh, listen, I support you. It was a little corny. You probably should use the gun. Go home. What are you doing here? <laughs> There's a vault. Yeah, but I don't want you to get hurt. Um, excuse me. You're talking to the conduit of kicks. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. So, like... Do you just kick better, or...? I kicked a dude over the horizon. Like, he sparkled in the distance and everything. Oh, that's hot. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, Spore is the conduit of community. Oh, I love him. And he's handing out, like, just uh, magical spores to people, and when they touch them, all their wounds are healed. And, like, candy, right? (laughs) Okay. He's like, it's Nurse Spore, here's your lollipops and your medicine. He has a fanny pack full of candy now. Thank you for that detail. Uh, one of the things I'm trying to do uh, aesthetically is to have Mardis maintain the disguise. If, is that possible for him to maintain that even after the benefits of a long rest? Yeah, for for the audience and for all the characters, you are just Mardis as far as anyone knows. And well, and and, and Mardis is sort of kind of sitting more or less by himself, just kind of observing things outside of the train. So Frank's gonna go and talk to Mardis because he's got a thought um he's just gonna go over and say um Mardis I um I don't know if I may be off base I've been thinking about this whole Ed not waking up thing um do you have a sense of if he's in there and just not waking up or if he's not in there at all the last time this happened 
I was able to wake him back up after Ash after Ash dropped him off the building during the one job before we came to Valentine. Ed was very much like how he was after Luna basically bled all over him. The di- when that happened, I basically was trying to internally repair some aspects of his chassis that I could get access to. It's like rewiring the circuitry in order to get him back up and running. But it's not working this time for some reason. So is is it is there anything we can do to help by looking at circuits or stuff? I I don't know. Okay. Um I, I, I I've only lived in this body in some form for eight years. I don't really know that much about the finer machinations of how or why it works. Neither do I. I was literally just gonna like Google it and try and find like a a a, a Valentine YouTube video. <laughs> what was it? A mu a YouTube video? I could tell you that I could tell you the name of the company that made this chassis if you wanted to try to look that up and see maybe there's some schematics. Yeah. But I doubt that they're gonna have too much information out there. There's patents on these designs and while that does put some of them in the public domain, there's aspects of the designs that are trade secrets, which makes it difficult to know which parts are important. But if you want to research something, I'll try to help however I can. If there's anything I can do, just just let me know if I can help. I, I know this has got to be a bit of a thing. It'll be weird suddenly not having another person in your head. You know, I've been living for hundreds of years easily before I came to this time. And there's a large stre- there's a good stretch of it where I was left to nothing but by being by myself and that felt pretty lonely, but this feels very different. I think it's it's different when you have someone that you're able to talk to pretty much all the time anytime you want and then all of a sudden it's just silent. Yeah. Anyway, we should probably deal with the whole we're on a train that's got the uh roots thing, but <laughs> let let me know if I can help. <laughs> oh, I I I I I don't think we need to worry too much about the train. I think it's going to move along on its own just fine got to keep in mind that this place behaves as a reflection of reality and that reflection does not need to be an exact copy but it represents the truth about that reality so my only thought is what do these roots represent about this reality we keep trying to go to one place but getting derailed i i think i think that might not be the the correct analogy there frank belly belly Belly, belly, belly. <laughs> do we have to make um Velta, uh, Do we have to make uh, Sarah roll for belly rubs? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, let's see. She has advantage, and I'm gonna factor in her, her how soft cat bellies are. Come on. So, One thousand four. I rolled. <laughs> oh man, that's a that's a pretty good roll there. That's a lot of belly rubs there. Yeah, you got, got you got got Lenora. Got a clamp. Got a chomp. No, do not jump. Yep, that's what happens when you get the belly. <laughs> Someone engage upon my <laughs> belly with thine finger dongles. Yeah, get Blood Ma's belly. Uh, everyone gets Blood Ma's belly. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do I? What do I legitimately have to roll to? to Dongle to... my belly. No. <laughs> what please. do I have to roll to belly rub? Uh, blood more. <laughs> Sleight of hand. <laughs> you just roll, roll, roll blood plus, uh, plus. Ma, you know, just okay. you know. <laughs> We've just given up on real jokes. I got a five on blood more belly rubs. You just get a handful of nip. Oh, no. <laughs> hey big boy. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy this time together. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs>
<laughs> Why are you like this, Chris? <laughs> His mommy wasn't there. No. Um, all right. So after you guys are all done being super weird, uh, Spores like sits down with you guys. The train's just going. It's along the tracks. Sometimes it goes off the tracks, but just keeps going as if there are still tracks because the tracks are basically a metaphor at this point. And they're just the roots are getting naughtier and naughtier. But you, I said naughty. Dirty I know. I know what I meant, but I know that's not what you heard. There. Uh, got a qu- question. Yeah. Are they roots, or are they like meant to be an analogy to like? blood veins and stuff like that emanating from like Luna to represent Nox being infused into the city. I'll leave that to the think pieces after the season's over. Oh shit. So not me. Got it. Um, and so Spore says to you all. So what do you guys think's in the vault? I bet, I bet it's just gold or like cash or a crown. Cause they're called crown. The company. It could be that if this is, if this is meant to be the form of the city itself, though, there's going to be imperfections instilled by the people around it. So I think that in part, whatever is in the vault is going to be shaped by those who come across it first. Are you thinking this is a, a one of those Harry Potter mirror of Harry said situations where it's, it's that thing what you want is in there? <laughs> I mean, we reference history books like Harry Potter, but I don't think that's really relevant here. Sarah says, I bet it's sand. I bet it's a, one of those uh, genie wish things where you think it's going to be good, but it turns out it's just bad, and they tricked you. I bet Aaron just filled it full of sand. No, it's definitely going to be something probably difficult and shitty. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, diff- difficult difficult, and shitty is a pretty apt description of Aaron. So This is, this is coming from... Like, the person who orchestrated giving magic powers to, like, everyone, so... It, it, there's there's not many limits on what this could be. Bloodmar thinks it was the friends we made along the way, and those we conquered. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, uh, this is, uh, yeah, so this is Sarah at this point. She says, I mean, Aaron's always talking about, like, what people deserve and, like, who should be in charge of stuff. So it feels like... If, if it's what people deserve, I fully imagine that we are going to open it up and there'll be nothing in there. That would be so raw. It's just been one of those months, years, however long... I've lost track of how long this has all been, but yeah, if it's what we deserve, probably nothing. But he also said that it's the soul of Valentine. Like, he was very explicit that's what's in there. Mm-hmm. The people, the people of Valentine. Are we just going to open it up and the people of Valentine are in there? Moles themselves. So he gave everyone powers and then tried to get them to fight to win a prize. It feels like the it, the powers are to let everybody be at their best and then to fight them against each other to see who wins because then they'll deserve what's in the vault. And the vault is whatever's at the heart of the city. And that's the experiment? Yeah, Sure. I, th- I think we just get there and open the door and have a look. <laughs> I'm not much one the uh, predictor type. Oh, we should have asked that computer. The computer might have known. Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, Wait, what computer? Oh, the one that predicts The stuff. algorithm. Predicty computer. We should have been like, well, computer, what's in there? The algorithm only knows what citizens of Valentine are likely to do based on oh, that's their... that's right, because he's not a citizen. Mm-hmm. Their participation in markets. Yeah. Yeah, but but it knows everything about Valentine. It, maybe it would know, hey, what's the soul of Valentine? Hara computer? Well, it knows everything about Valentine as it pertains to the markets and dealing fighting against the crown heads is participating in the market. Yeah, our super fancy predicty computer can't predict shit. Yeah. Also You can't predict it. Yeah. Aaron said he took data from the first uh Project Eternity site to put into the Einsoft, if you guys will recall. Yeah. So, like, part of his exper- part of his experiment of even making Valentine itself appear here was taking the algorithm, so... I guess I have a fun disadvantage in all this and not being a conduit myself anymore. Well, I never was one in the first place, so... You're the conduit of Mardis, and that's a pretty cool thing to be. <laughs> that is not actually accurate, because... Or ac- I mean, people could be conduits of themselves if their ideal form is out don't, there. But, don't you contradict me? <laughs> but you are you are, you like you cut out the middleman. Normally, people are conduits to their ideal self. You're just the ideal self. Yeah, you are Mardis itself. That's that's you know that's all right. You you. Yeah, but 
you want magic powers. I I get it. You want to be able to like you want magic. Powers. <laughs> I already have magic powers. I was when it gave them to Ed in the first place, but Ed was the one who Ed was the one that made us work even better together. So maybe he's just doing a real big snooze. <laughs> Well, except that <gasps> snoozing's not something that they do. Maybe Ed is in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've alluded to a few times, I think there might be something I can use to get Ed back in the vault. That's my hope, at least. Let's get to the vault. <laughs> As you say that, um, the subway train exits the tunnel it's in, and uh, to your all of your surprises, you are not at the subway station, you are in a field. And it takes a second to figure out where exactly you are, but you look out the windows and you realize the train has just emerged out the front door of the Blackacre estate from the first heist. And it is gliding across the uh, the grounds of the estate where that is filled with uh, the Droney Maloney's, the drones with the guns in their mouths that were here, that Frank took down one and used it to transport Skell into the internet. And as the train just comes out of the front door of this house in a way that it should not be able to, all the drones turn and begin firing on the train. Um, dexterity saving throw, everybody, as a field full of drones riddle the train with gunfire. I guess. You already had a long rest, so you, you're at full health Am again. Am still raged? No. Damn. Uh, 18. 20. Do I get disadvantage? Yes. Dang! I rolled a 20. I crit! So, Lenora, you've been using Nox this entire final arc. Uh, very greedy of you. You will now do the rest of it with a disadvantage. That's fine. So, Chris saves. Um, Frank saves, I think, probably. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Blood Maw and Frank save. They take uh, two. Everyone else takes four. It's just you guys. It's, like, not a dead on. The the whole train is riddled with gunfire, and you guys just catch some reflect reflected uh, flack from, like, broken windows and stuff um, as the train is being strafed. Can I fire back at one of the drones? Absolutely. With the rocket launcher? Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. I have to make a... De- yeah. I'm making a dexterity saving throw. What are the... Yeah. Sorry. I'm I not- launched my log of anger at you! They fail. It's 66 damage. And uh, I roll 21 damage. All right, yep. So you fire the rocket launcher out the window of the train, and you hit a Droney Maloney dead on, and it explodes, instantly reducing it to fragments. It is gone as it could possibly be. Um, and the people on the train are heartened by that. They're like, damn, first shot, huh? You've never used one of those before, huh? Blood Maw is a natural at all weapons that maim and eviscerate! Oh my god. And I vomit blood into the air. <laughs> it's like, what are you like? What are you like? Some sort of deranged cat? You're gonna have to take damage every time you Just, do that from now on. Also, where are you getting all this blood from? Jesus. Exactly. It's like, it's like you're not a you're not a you're not a bottomless you're not a blood of holding you know or whatever that we would want to call like that. One of those you know? chocolate fountains, but it's blood. It, yeah, exactly. I mean, the whole blood maw thing, it's a reference to a practice in wrestling called blading, where you make yourself bleed with a hidden razor blade because crowds are like, oh, blood, this is really intense. But he's not just a, a, a machine gun of blood. Anyway. Oh, man, I wish he was. Uh, it's such a great band name. Um, all right. So you can blow one of the Droney Maloney's out of the sky and they start flying around to the front of the train. Um, it seems like they're they're gathering up there for some nefarious purpose. The train is just going across this open field of grass, like manip, uh, meticulously manicured lawn, and it's just rolling over it like it's train tracks. You also see in the distance the cityscape of North Valentine. Just uh, it's it's exaggerated. Like every single building is a skyscraper instead of just sharp financial towering over a bunch of other very tall buildings. They're all sharp financial. So they're little. The the Maloney's are little. Yes, these aren't the military drones from the military base. These are Droney Maloney's, which are basically like flying emojis with uh, guns in their mouths. Realistically, if I wanted to use my magnet powers to just fucking throw a few, how many could I get in one throw? You could push one into another, and if you did it well enough, they both take damage. <sighs> okay. Come on, disadvantage. Please be nice. Did it go? Twelve. God damn it, I did seven. Six. Ha ha! I'm gonna just fucking um, like toss one like a receipt you're throwing in the trash. Uh huh. Um, if I'm, I wanna hit him into other ones to try and get him like just fucking like stunned or whatever. 
You throw one Droning Maloney into another Droning Maloney, and they, when they collide, like billiard balls, um, instead of being both damaged beyond repair, like perhaps you'd hoped, they explode like grenades, setting off the other Droning Maloney's gathered around the front of the train, and the front of the train is destroyed, and it begins derailing. Everybody, tell me how you escape from this derailing train that Lenora just blew off the tracks. Fuck! Uh, Blood Maw will grab two nearby people, and he's going to leap out of the train to uh, protect these people and uh, get out of the train. Just using his body as like a giant tank, basically. All right, constitution saving throw to tank throwing yourself out the window of a train carrying two passengers. I rolled a 10. Is that good? You fail. Oh. You're going to take uh, 12 damage as you hit the ground and land on a piece of glass. Ow. <laughs> Fuck. Three people on the train still. It's derailing. The whole front of it just got blown off. Okay, Frank's just going to benign transposition out the train. Fair enough. Teleport up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space. No, yeah, no skin off Frank's nose at all. You just boop out of the train and you watch as it goes tumbling. It wasn't actually on real tracks. Once again, more of metaphorical ones just going along its route here in Valentine itself where physics don't apply, but it's rolling uh, across this field as if it derailed. Uh, Mardis will slap haste on himself and then basically try to do a diving roll out of the train to, you know, basically uh, acrobatically roll off the uh, roll off the roll off thing. So I'm going to assume a deck saving throw to avoid with advantage because you used haste. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I'm glad you approve. 23. You tell me, dog. All right. So like the train's derailing. Uh. Mike Martis is startled, looks at the opening in the front of the train and sees like the immaculately treated fields and uh, outside the manor. And then um, basically just takes the opportunity to dash across the train, slapping his chest to cast haste on himself and dives out one of the shot out windows um, before just rolling out on the ground and landing in, you know, three point, you know, stance on the ground after rolling it off a few times. All right, Lenora, you're the last one on the train. Can Bozogs fly? No. Shit. Okay. Yeah, uh, Mardis didn't grab anyone because uh, his strength is five. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get... I was hoping she could fly because now he gets four. He's such a good boy. Um, it doesn't say. Can you take somebody with you with Missy Step? No. Fuck. God fucking damn it. Okay. I'm going to cast Fly on myself, and I'm going to hopefully not drop my bird girlfriend. All right, so roll, uh, let's see, Strength. Oh, God. I'm going to drop her. Please. Oh, 18. Never mind. I got her. Yep, you did. So tell me what you do. So the train is, now it's starting to turn over and flip. Um, Blood Maw, you just grabbed two people at random, or did you grab perhaps Spore? Please. Uh, I just grab people, like regular people. Spore's your friend. The ones he with gave the, us candy. The least chance of surviving, basically. Like, they were the ones that probably weren't going to have anything. Like, Spore's a trained wrestler, so it feels like he'd have Please. more of a shot and the others would help. I, I don't think any of Frank's abilities to get off this would have let him take anyone, unfortunately. Or it would have helped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so I cast Fly on myself. I uh, swoop up my bird girlfriend in my arms very uh, romantically. And then I'm assuming it's like turning. I want to fly out like the double doors that are like open because it's crashing, I guess. Yeah. And as you do, Sarah yells, swing me around. I'm going to do it. I'm a swinger. You swing her around and she uses her conduit of kicks to kick a hole. She just kicks the side of the train off and uh, Spore jumps out through that new hole. She just kicks yes. a clear like path through the wall. Uh, with her her feet basically like catch fire and light and magic and she just shears it off it's almost like it erases in front of the sheer power of her kick and Sp spore dives out through that new hole that was really cool babe <laughs> i didn't know you could fly uh yes i never used it before i guess but yeah i can do it it's, so you're holding like you're holding onto her wing with your arm and she's like dangling down below you uh, well, since Spore is safe now, I'm going to scoop her back up in my arms. Real smooth, like. Mm, okay. Mm. <laughs> She's... <laughs> 
Nice. Um, all right. So you land in the field with her. Um, and Spore, you know, rolls out of the way. Actually, as, as soon as the train comes to a stop, uh, he runs back in immediately to start helping people. He doesn't even, like, touch base with you guys. All right, I'm going to let down the two people that I'm carrying and say, Stay strong, fellow normal people, and grow stronger so that one day we may battle to the death. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> all right nice um all around you guys see that uh roots are pu- like pushing up through the dirt of this field and they lead into the city um from this field and you see that what used to be black acre like collapses into the ground as the train derailed and it's no longer useful for the train to come and go from south valentine itself i feel like we should follow these roots i have a feeling that 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 house collapsing was symbolism for something, but I, I don't have the wherewithal to think much about it. So yes, let's go where the roots lead us. Uh, Sarah says, um, first of all, chomp. She chomps your ears. Fair. <laughs> Second of all, um, sounds like you guys are going to go into the city where all the scary roots go. And there's also an army of drones that are shooting people. And uh, there's a train full of people who need help. Do you think I would perhaps be more helpful here helping Spore help people out of the train? Or should I go into the army zone with all the shooting? I would rather you not get shot. Uh-huh. And I feel like Spore is little. Capable, but he is little. He is. So I feel like you should help him with your mighty kicks. Can, can you pack us like a lunchbox of spores? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? So Spore box is like... He can only do so many spores. He's going to need them for the for the people who just survived the train crash that you kind of did. Lenora, you kind of did that. I was trying to help. I know. I, listen, babe, I know. You totally blew up the train, though. We were trying to help <laughs> the Team Loser story. Yeah. <laughs> Season four, we were trying to help. <laughs> oh, boy. So, uh, yeah, Sarah and Spore are going to stay behind to help people. Um, but you you can see both in the distance, there's the city full of huge skyscrapers, and there's also just drones flitting between the buildings. Um, it's like an ominous murder of crows in a horror movie where it's like, oh, there's just all over the power line, huh? I guess the killer must be near. It's that kind of effect, but military drones and Journey Maloney's. So. Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Um, so the party begins following the routes that are going into the city as you guys cross, um, and you cross directly from a open field that is part of an estate and in, into like basically Times Square. And there's no transition and it makes you feel physically ill, first of all. Mm-hmm. That's how weird the space is. Second of all, you see where all the routes are going. There is a an enormous tree in the center of the city that towers over the skyscrapers. Um, And it has 10 gnarled branches and leaves of pure pitch black. I don't know what I expected. Uh, Do we have the ability to control five of those 10 branches? Because control over over ground? No. Um, So I think you might need to get closer to test that. But that is you you have you've cottoned on. It is the symbol of the Crown Corporation, a tree with 10 branches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, The air is thick with drones and you can hear the sounds of gunfighting through the streets. Ah, that's that's a lovely sound, right? Oh, wait, no, that's a horrifying sound. My mistake. I get those two mixed up all the time. Um, It's very spooky. Spooky. Yes. Uh, let's investigate, gang. Come on. Yeah, do you want to just want to roll something? I feel like this is like one of the last uh, utility rolls of the season here. Survival? Uh, yeah, I- I'll take the roll for survival. Uh, okay, it's, it's, it's a plus number. I'll, I guess I'll roll that. I have advantage on survival rolls because... 17! Ranger. Uh, 20? 25. 25, 17, and 20. Oh my gosh. You guys absolutely crush it. Oh, I got an 18. Suck eggs, Yorski. <laughs> Blood Mod didn't roll the worst. You guys actually do improbably well. Um, so you start uh, working your way through the streets. Uh, there's a couple of points where you see gunfighting between uh, Archons and Kraken Banes or Archons and uh, Ash Forged and just Ruffians, Shadow Runners, Ne'er Do Wells. Um, if you had failed this, we would have a skirmish with some of these people. Um, but you, with your very good roll, you can pass them by and continue to follow the routes. Um, at a certain point, you get deeper into the cityscape and you get to 
basically where you could start walking up on the roots as natural bridges. Um, that's how big they are. I just want to stress that it's, this tree is the size of like several skyscrapers together. It's in the middle of the city and it has all of these roots that are infesting the whole thing. And you have to like walk up the roots to get to the tree, which you can now see has some sort of building built into the trunk of it. Um, also, as you walk up, you see there is someone standing on one of the roots uh, where it kind of makes a plateau. That person is Beatrice Beauregard. I fucking knew it. And he has an easel set up and he's painting something. Uh, how about can we not? Um, as you get closer, you see another weird thing, which is that there is no pitched gunfighting in this area. And in fact, although you see soldiers and mercenaries and privateers all around you, they're frozen. (sighs) Do the two of these seem connected? Uh, 100% connected. Okay, we're not in combat yet, right? No, there's, let's say, two dozen soldiers or just armed people who fought their way here and they are frozen in place. Like there's one person who's standing with their gun up and like the barrel is still hot like they fired it before they're frozen. And one person has a knife through the side of their head and they're just standing there. One person's picking their nose like they're all just frozen in place all around Beatrice. Considering those really high survival roles, uh, have we been noticed yet by Beatrice? No, that's why I'm giving you this. Yeah, you, we would have had complications if you guys hadn't done the best roles of the season. Okay, in that case, I want to I wanna try a spell I didn't get to rattle off the way I wanted to before. I'm going to try Dominate Person on Beatrice. All right, so you want to cast a spell on the person that you know can cast the spell Power Word Death? Well, it, like, correct me, team, if you think this isn't a good idea, but, like, oh, yeah. if we... Uh, yeah. it, it's not a good idea, because the because power miracles means that when there's a particular... Th- when when he perceives a threat, Bo can just invoke a miracle. Wasn't it that if his life is imminently at risk to the point that he requires divine intervention? Uh, I, it is not an exact science, Basically, Bo, as a miraculous being who is 3D printed and had a consciousness uploaded, is the conduit of miracles. And so they do not have the ability to just make stuff. They can't just cast power word death a hundred times. But miracles will happen around them. And it's extremely dangerous to mess with. I'll just say that. Because like, here's, here's my concern. is If we walk up, yeah, are they just going to freeze us in place like the rest of these people? Like, sh- Do we need to do something while we have the drop on them? Or stealth rolls? Can we try and just sneak straight past them? Can we stealth? Yes. Of yeah. course. Okay, yeah. Ten. I rolled a seventeen. Uh seventeen on stealth. And fifteen for me. Alright, so uh we have fifteen, seventeen, and seventeen. Uh nobody hit twenty. So you guys cannot sneak up past Bo without anybody noticing. Uh, but Bo does not notice. Bo is caught in reverie painting all of the soldiers he froze. What notices you? Is bear. Bird. Bird. Who is a bear? Uh, who uh, comes around a corner, uh, like from under some roots, uh, carrying a severed leg he is chewing on of a soldier. You can see he has like uh, camo patterned pants. Oh, oh, look at it. It thinks it's people. Wait a Aww, minute. He's a good boy. Uh, drops the leg when he sees Lenora and runs up and starts licking you. I'm going to uh, pet Bird and then I'm going to do like the shh. <laughs> I feel like he's smart enough to know what that means. Uh-huh, he nods and then runs back to Beatrice. <laughs> and Beatri- Please don't tell her. And Beatrice is painting and says, Yes, I see them, bird. I'm I'm busy. Please <laughs> entertain the guests. I'm, I just got to get this right. Um, and you- oh, hey, Bo. Nice painting. Uh, when you guys get high enough up these roots, you can see over some of the buildings and you see all around Valentine itself is the sandstorm raging, red and terrible. Outside, it's there seems to be some kind of barrier between Valentine itself and the sandstorm because logically the city floating there sh- should be getting shellacked by the sand, but it's not. Uh, but all around this place is the, is the raging sandstorm, um, and Bo is trying to capture it just right. Uh, in it behind all of the soldiers, he froze with the spell Time Stop, uh, which is a level nine spell like Power Word Death. So power, power word, kill power word, kill. Um, and if you know the spell time stop, you also know that it doesn't work exactly like this. So yeah, something's it's working beyond it's, it's working beyond its normal domain. If it's holding them in position 
this long. Absolutely. So when I tell you that Bo is a conduit of miracles, yeah, please take me at my word. <laughs> um, so so Bird, yeah, Bird uh, finds another frozen soldier and just starts chewing on him um, as Bo continues painting. And in the you know behind this scene, there's the roots of the tree up to the building that is built into the side of this tree that dominates the cityscape. Can, can we just casually walk past and go, um, that painting looks really fantastic. You've really captured the perfect number of people to be painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you start walking by, Bo says, he's gonna kill you, you know. A lot of people should have killed us a long time before now, so we're gonna roll the dice. Who's in there? Who do you think's in there, Martis? Is it some version of Solomon? No, it's Aaron, right? Yes. God, I hate that guy. All the soldiers who've gone by me have died screaming. I can hear them from here. I appreciate the I appreciate the concern, Bo, but that's not enough to deter me from going in there. If we die, at least do a cool painting of us. <laughs> do you want to sit for a portrait? Um, Before you go? Draw our dead bodies, like, if we die. Just like, <laughs> that, they'll stay still for you. Actually, can I make a request, Bo? Of course. Can you make a portrait of myself and Ed? Aww. Side by side? Are you asking for Ed Mardis fan art? <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to ask for that, okay? I don't need to ask for that. Well, I don't think Bo is as talented as our listeners anyway, so... Yeah. But, 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 you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bo says, uh, what happened to the other one? I don't know. He won't wake up. After Luna perished, Ed has been quiet. And that's why I have to go in there. (laughs) That's why you have to go and die and leave Ed all alone? I have to go there because Aaron's the only one who I think might have an idea about how to save Ed. The only thing in there is death. Yeah, that sounds great. (laughs) There's no future for you in the vault, Martis. So what are you proposing? That I don't do anything? I propose that for once in whatever you call your life, you just deal with me like another person. And we just negotiate. What do you want to negotiate, Bo? You and your friends. You're taking over Crown. Oh, you want to buy out? <laughs> I want assurances. What are your what are your requests? My own studio, my own manufacturing sites, my own brands, my own lines. I don't want the public to know anything has changed with me and my legacy. I could care less about the money and the structure and the politics, but Beauregard means something to people all over the world. And if you make me fight for it, I will. And what are you offering? Miracles. I don't know about y'all, but I'm cool with this. I'm willing to agree to these terms, Bo. I'd ask you to shake on it, but your disdain for me is palpable. (laughs) What is it about me that you don't like, Mardis? Ever since we've met, I've been trying to advance your career. I'm trying to put you guys in the best spot possible. And you just, you've always hated me. I still in some ways blame you for what happened to Kat. The wrestling job just seemed to set her off on a particular path, and the fact that the first job we did after we were enlisted seemed to affect her directly seemed almost spiteful, even though I suspect there was no spite on your part in the decision to make that job happen. It was just coincidence. My mixed feelings about you are largely down to the fact that very early on you made it very clear we did not have an option to walk away from you. Nobody has an option to walk away. (laughs) There was a time when we were all apes running around in the forest and we didn't have a choice to hunt and kill. And now we're here in the city and you still don't have a choice to walk away from that. You're just hunting a different game. Don't bullshit us. Now that we're in a position where we have some of the power that you have, 
we have the option to say to an individual person, yeah, it's okay, you can walk away from this. Don't bullshit us and pretend that you didn't have a choice. You could have let us walk away any time. You chose not to. You had us under your control and you chose not to let us go, and that is a choice you made. Yeah, would it have killed you to get some donuts for the break room every now and then? (laughs) Part of being a boss is creating win-win situations. I did the right thing with you and your team, even if you can't see it. Maybe I pushed Katarina too far, but she was dead the moment Nucky got his hands on her. She just didn't know it. I I advanced the timeline, that's all. She would have exploded sooner or not. Sooner or later, she was going to get herself killed. Listen, I don't hate you. I just don't trust you. (laughs) Good. You're going to need those instincts if you're going to be a boss. But also maybe just like treat people like people and not like slaves. No. (laughs) Well, agree to disagree. If you want a miracle... We can make this deal. You let me have my legacy. I give you what you need to step into the vault. It's as simple as that. I think we've. I. I think we've got a deal. Yeah, I'm down. I've already said. I'm willing to agree to these terms. I don't have to like you, in order to find the terms reasonable and acceptable. All right. Uh, Beatrice puts down uh, his paintbrush. And holds out a hand and says, General Heller's gun. Martis will take out the gun, demonstrate proper protocol, and unload it. And then offers it hand, uh, hand first, uh, handle first to Bo. Do you leave one shell? Or do you leave one in the chamber? D- is it necessary for him to leave one in the chamber? Yes. He'll leave one bullet in the chamber and offer the gun to Bo. Bo says, wow, it's heavier than it looks, huh? He carries quite a lot with it. All of you do. (laughs) Damn, I was about to say same. Now that you've got the crown, you're going to find out just how heavy it is. It's going to give you neck pains. (laughs) Blood Maw whips weights with his neck. His neck is the strongest there is. Your little revolution is, uh, I think it's going to succeed, but... Have you really ever thought about the word revolution? It's... I mean, when something revolves, it goes all the way around, back to where it started. We're going to turn this whole thing 360 degrees and end up where we started. Is that what you're going to say? Do you think differently? I can't say that I know know for sure if things will be different. But as someone who's been aware of other things that have been turning for long periods of time, just because it will revolve back and the cycle begins once more, it does not make the effort futile in the current. So, while some may view that cyclical nature as a thing to be despondent and have despair over, I just view it as a state of being and try to do what I can to make things better for those that I care about. The the fact that this is a cycle means that even if we don't enact meaningful change, someone's eventually going to come round and they'll do it. There's going to be chance after chance for people to change this world and hopefully it'll be us and if not, it'll be the next revolutionaries that come round. Yeah, I had no future anyway. Why not try and do something good? Exactly. This is... This feels like a better shot of making a meaningful change on the world than just playing card games in like a bunch of community <laughs> centers trying to relive the old days. Blood Maw's only here because he was offered food and compensation for service. <laughs> uh, but, but no, uh, actually, I don't have anything like super significant in the same way since uh, kind of on a meta level. I think it's important. I don't uh, because. Uh, I've had two previous characters to get to this point. One of them died gain here, and the other one became too sort of emotionally broken by the journey. So uh, I think uh, them not having anything to say in response would be my response to that collage. All right, my strange little revolutionaries. I guess it's time for your miracle. 
Jesus Christ. I have a feeling I know where this is going. Beatrice Beauregard shoots Martis in the throat. You believe it's morning. I'm alive, but that's the last thing on my mind. You believe it's morning. I'm alive, but that's the last thing on my mind. Oh. Y'all see them in the street struggling, young, dumb, and thuggin', give a fuck about nothing. Stuck at rock bottom, trying to come up on something. Pumping from Lauren, Austin, credits, love to credit, August 2018. God damn, it's already more than halfway through the year, what the fuck? You're welcome. Please no. I did it, I'm taking credit. Also, credits, music, for August 2018. We have a overclocked remix, Geofractura, an arrangement of Fault Zone from Echo the Dolphin, The Tides of Time. I love we, Echo the Dolphin. I do love Echo the Dolphin, too. It's so hard. It's imp- impossible, actually. Uh, also, Cream, Phonics remix mm. by the Wu-Tang Clan, and Back in the Game, the Phonics remix by the Wu-Tang Clan. Of course, everyone knows this season's all about the cash, and now it's almost over. We're at the end. Are you excited? I'm I'm excited. Like every season, it's like, oh, this is too much. Time for casual laughing with buds for the first couple episodes. But mm-hmm. I also miss uh, my characters at the end of every season, so it's like mm-hmm. bittersweet. Lenora is very good. Uh, very is your most OC of OCs, but also the highest body count. So I'm keeping an eye on you. I'm not. No, I'm just a marshmallow. Uh Uh-huh. All right. Executive producers for August. It's a weird month, A, because Patreon had a bunch of updates and stuff and a bunch of the credit cards got canceled. So if you're not on the list, I apologize. Fuck you, Patreon. (laughs) Uh, I promise I was not my fault, but I I have the list they have garnished me with. It's also an alphabetical order for the first time that I'm aware of. So that's another fun little wrinkle. Um, You want to start reading them? Executive producers for August 2018 are A Flaming Horse's Patoot, <laughs> Aki Savalainen, Albert West, Andrew Birmingham, Andrew Fallu, Conduit of Mediocrity Itself, Andrew Grothen, Anna, Anna Michael, Anthony Sever, Arjun Koning, Arna Helgado, dear, Artemis BJJ Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in Bristol, August Rue, Bloody Roar Needs Pangolins, it does. I also need pangolins. <laughs> Brady Warner. <laughs> Fuck Brent. According to all law- known laws of aviation, there's no way a B and then it cuts off because you ran out of characters, you sadistic bastard. I want to know what the B can't do. <laughs> it's the it's the, it's the it's the script of B movie. It's the first line of oh, the script of I've B never movie. I've seen that, and I will continue to do that. Okay, continuing. Cameron Abbas. <laughs> Carter Rayner. Christopher Charlow. Cody Jackson. Counterfeit. Daniel Stashik. Don. Dennis Bangston. Ten- Dennis Pancake Detlefson. Devin Smith. Douglas Williamson. Dr. Tao. Dr. Goatman. There's a lot of doctors. I've got a very well read. Some of, some of our listeners are geniuses, and some of them love B movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Getting Brent. Dylan. Uh, Einar Johansson. Ecorin. Elderly Goose. Eleanor Nanante sees Periton. Aline. No, it's Aline! Aline! And Diego Van Dane. Erwan Lilagadik. I think that, that sounds like a hero from Celtish folklore. It does. Exos. Exilaris. Five purple wands. Florian H. You have to say Florian H. Finger guns, finger guns, finger guns. You have to hear the finger guns. I'm getting so dunked on this morning. I didn't <laughs> fuck anything up, I don't think yet. Francois V. Garrett. Grimlock. Harley Astor. Harris and Andrew. Hedron Master. Hustle Bones. I'm a pretty kitty full of snuggles and violence. <laughs> Aren't they all? Yeah. Ingmar Gremmen. Ionis Soy My Name. Love it. Nicolopolis. Isaac Arevalo. Jack Cl- Clo. Like the Clo cards? Jadakins, and then a ASCII picture That's of a, a dick. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it coming a mile away and it still got me somehow. <laughs> James Neely. Janiac, form of tripping your face off. Wow, big mood. Mm-hmm. Jasper Singh. J. Logan, conduit of queerness itself. Mm. Jeff Clark. Jerry, herself. Jesse Young. Joaquin Groening. John Potts. John Barnett. 
Joseph Tombrello. Josh Mosier. Joy Fox. Drew Man Jack. Julian Phillips. Junk 2.0. Just a Jester. Justin Berthasel. Conduit of Ooh, ooh <laughs> itself. <laughs> Big same. <laughs> now that p- totally puts to bed the theory that it's supposed to be a face. Because how would I pronounce it if it was a face? It's ooh woo. Ooh woo. <laughs> it's a face and an emotion. Uh huh. Jorgen, conduit of name butchering Winework Ford. Caster UK. Kiefer Lowe. Ken Fersel. Kevin Dobbins. Killer Cotton Shizno. Kitty Foe. Criterion. Lana Seawolf. Lass Cruz. Levy, the young continent of not mad, just disappointed. Oh. Oh, we've all been there. Yeah. Lindsay Pankhurst. Lauren Cates. Luke Powers. Mmm, Joe. <laughs> 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 you looked at that and you said M mm, Joe and not M Joe as if it was the initial th- first name. <laughs> I thought it would be funny. Oh, Madison Lilith McKenzie. Major Tim. A cult of Gorfanax. Matthew B. Hare. Matthew Weber. Matthew Lackett. Majin. Melissa Booker. Melissa Nielsen. Mel Teach. Marissa Donaldson. Michael Hall. Miko from Finland. Morgan Rapp. Nicholas Dominic. Uh Niels. June I I know Jorette, I'm so sorry. Noah Sudret. Notorious Stoltz. Paul Mullen. Possum Kingdom Refugee, come to my house. No, we need to go to the Possum Kingdom. That's true. I do love the po- but why are they refugees? Is it a terrible kingdom? It's just it's too much food. Oh, they love their garbage. <laughs> uh, primordial Orc. Pruitt Holcomb. Puck. Quench the Void. Random Web Person. Razumi Yazura. Rainer, the conduit of being stoned. No, that's me. Robert Dakin. <laughs> Ryan Brown. Salad child. <laughs> Samantha is meing in Tallahassee rain. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Samantha, are you here? What are you doing? Oh no. Samantha. Sarah Stone. Scott Cummings. Scotty Vilhard. Sean Lyons Burke. Sean, the host of Funk Dunk Plays. Savard and Akrasamova. Starlight Glimmer did nothing wrong. Stay tuned. Sweaty Cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little status update on the cucumber. Sydney Marzing. The cast of Dungeons the Gathering. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Podcast Credits Edition. See, they said they ported it to every platform, but now it's true. It wasn't true until it was in a podcast credits. Oh. Thank you. Oh no, the ghost of Professor Blackwood. You know, you know I had to do it to him. The Hadsels. The most wise guru. <laughs> Paladin's wife. Toby Gleason Stack. Toshir Kuru. Shaynus. Vigor Arnston. Victoria Melito. Vizzy Huggles. Wayne Hodgins. Birthday July 30th. Dang, happy <laughs> birthday, bro. Just snug a little birthday wish in there for yourself. That's fun. Ziphosaurus. Yam! Z. 23,619. You didn't like the way I did it last time. How did you like it that time? Jean Valjean's number in Les Mis is two. No, wait. I thought it was. Never mind. Oh, no. You thought you had a reference and it's not the right reference. Oh, God. No, my brain did it bad. I literally thought this. Now that we're far enough into it, I can reveal. I thought this was going to be the Les Mis season. I literally thought that it was just going to be like barricades in the street at some point. Do you hear the Sneeple sing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. What else do we do with this part? We talk about animals. Oh, no. Skitch.bandcamp. Yeah, skitch.bandcamp. The skitch.bandcamp. Bandcamp. Bandcamp. I'm just like, can't word. Uh-huh. Chris Larios at patreon.com slash weekly manga recap. That's where he weekly manga recaps. Uh, Laura, kotaku.co.uk. Lauren. Rargalicious on Twitter. Oh, that's me. That is you. I am patreon.com slash austinyorski. Um, as I said, Patreon's being weird, so it, help. Please help. I'm dying. We're all dying, but dying. I'm double dying now because the website did bad. Um, What else? Anywhere on Podbean, Google Play, YouTube. We're probably places I don't even know, but if you just do the things that you're allowed to do there, just click all around. Just, just click on stuff. See what feels right. I don't know. Algorithms? Yeah. Love to click. You got to click, really. Um, That's it, right? Yeah. Thanks to all the cats and dogs listening. Mm-hmm. Love you guys. I met a new cat recently. Yeah, you're like obsessed with her, and you hate my cats all of a sudden. 
Her name's Penelope, and she's a princess, and your cats are goblins. Fuck off! Your cats are goblins. Penelope is a perfect lady, a princess, a queen. I stand for this queen. You're a goblin! Got you in bed with a goblin. Kissing goblins? Kissing goblins. Goblin vomit.